I know that this topic is not the most sexy thing out there in the business world, but I honestly think that the expense line of office, of rent, of mortgage is a make or break for a lot of entrepreneurs, especially early stage entrepreneurs, where you completely bite off more than you can chew on rent, on monthly dues that you owe somebody for your office space. It's not a necessity, really. It's not a 100% needed thing to have your own office in your own building when you're building a business. I think this is a huge ego thing that people have where they want their name on a building, they feel like they need to have an office. Maybe you have an employer or two and you feel like you need a spot for everyone. The reality is, especially for early stage startups, you don't need to have a space. What you need to do is get resourceful and figuring out where you can go on the cheap to get you going until cash flow is flowing. Oli and I are gonna dive into this and what you're about to see in, uh, as soon as this intro is done in a minute or whatever it is, we're in a new space for the DHE show and we have spent the last two months looking at buildings and evaluating leases and finally came to the conclusion, there's gotta be a way that we can do this on the cheap. Uh, and we found our space and we're super excited. So this is uh, one of the few remaining intros you're gonna see from me in the office here today. Uh, and you're gonna see us move to our new podcast studio that we're super excited about and why we did it, how we did it, and so much more is coming to you guys right now. Here we go. All right, so let's let's kick this off with an update. Where are we right now? We, we're in a, we're, we're in a podcast studio that we built with we're, our hands. We're in our new studio. Hell yeah! <laughs> you, you and I built this thing. Oh yeah, right. I, I built. I, I put the stone on the outside. Uh, no, I mean we're in a, uh, a undisclosed secret location that's a lot more beautiful than our last place um we were recording just at our desk and it the audio there was not great it wasn't wonderful we couldn't really leave stuff up it was just kind of a clusterfuck which by the way how much better does our office look without all this stuff just hanging out in our office that and those damn boxes finally oh, got moved yeah those boxes the, the the now they're just the tower of doom in the storage closet <laughs> Well, we don't have to look at them every day, so it's all good. No, which is good, which is very good. So now we're now we're off the races, but we're at a uh, you know in a, in a portion of uh, my parents' house that wasn't being used. We're like, hey, can we use that for a podcast? And they're like, yeah, sure. Um, partly because my dad is our CFO and he doesn't want us to burn through money on dumb shit like getting a new office, <laughs> spend a bunch of money, which makes a lot of sense. But also this this has a much better vibe to it and it's much more beautiful and. Yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, this is going to be awesome. And I think it, um, on the business side of things. So I, one, one call it real quick. I think the podcast moving forward is going to be a little more chill, a little like we are absolutely about providing value for business. We're act, a, absolutely about entrepreneurship and dads and husbands, but like, let's just have fun with it. Cause a, Abby laughs every time that we talk, she doesn't laugh when we podcast. She's like, Oh, you guys are a bunch of idiots. You're too, you're too formal. She's Shut also up. 25. I'm an ageist. <laughs> she's 24. Uh, I like saying she's 25. She's a quarter of a century old. They're getting there. And the, the funny part about the whole thing, right, is is that you're right. She she laughs at us and thinks that we're hilarious until we turn on the camera. And she's like, you guys are fucking losers. You guys <laughs> are idiots. What are you guys doing? The other part of it, maybe, do you ever think like we're not actually that funny? She's just like, oh, my God, I can't believe yeah. I have to put up these two millennials. Half the time that she's laughing, I'm like... Why is she actually laughing at us? We're just idiots. Why, why is she laughing at us millennials? She's a Gen Zer. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so a little more chill, a little more just us being us, but um, we're still going to try to provide insight, right? Like that's the whole point. The show, yes, entertainment, but also like, yeah. we really want to provide value. So I, going back to what you said about finding a spot, how many offices have we looked at where you're like, I want a place that we can record, 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 record? Seven, 10, 15, maybe 20. I don't know. Like, we, we've looked at so many offices. I think this is the problem. Like if this is an entrepreneurial problem too, office space is freaking expensive. And it's really like, I was thinking about this the other day, like, you know, our neighbors, we, we're next to a tech company in this class C office building we're in and our neighbors are just exploding. Like they're growing like crazy. I'm like, man, their, their, their revenue per square foot has to be off the charts. Yeah. And I don't know if anybody's ever calculated revenue per square foot, but I was like, man, that'd be kind of an interesting thing. Like, are you wasting all this real estate? But the reality of the situation is like, we've looked at all this office space. The one place that we absolutely, I think, fell in love with, we moved in in our minds was the, the one with the warehouse space. Yeah. 
And then boom, that disappeared overnight. You know, now I think we're just going to stay in our current space and come over here on Tuesdays, record. Not a big deal. It's, it's, you know, an extra one minute or two minutes, but yeah, trying to find a space has been a nightmare to right. grow, to grow into. And we were trying to find a space that we had to force fit in only through the, you threw this out to me a long time ago, dude, why don't we just record at my house? And I didn't want to record at your house because family and kids and like, I just thought the office was the spot, right? We have it in the office, but the office is not, it's not a creative space. Like it's not a spot where we get to just be us and, and do our thing. No, it's a, it's a dull space. Yeah, it really is. And then we came over here a week ago. It was a week ago that we came yeah. over here, right? And you gave us a tour of this spot and I'm like, who uses this, this building? And you said, well, we use it twice a year. <laughs> like it's, Perfect. Why don't we just move our shit here? It's free. We can fit it into what we want it to be eventually, but like we don't have to spend money on an office because we have something that is totally usable right in front of us. To me, it's really interesting too, because when you look at the, again, the cost of the office, the vibe in the office, like we have fun at the office, but nothing about class C office space, which is the cheapest office space. And if you're not familiar, it goes ABC, A being like marquee, B is a little bit worse than Marquee and C is like, basically, I hope I don't get bit by a rat. And so, <laughs> no, just joking to you commercial real estate dudes out there. But in the class, there's, there, there's no amenities. There's there's no luxury. There's like, it's like the tenant moves out. Let's slap a coat of paint on, try and cover up some stuff. Um, it, it, it There's nothing great about it. So it, it is tough to like be super stoked and excited, which going back now, it changes my perspective in corporate America. I understand why big corporations spend an, absolute shitload of money on real estate it makes a lot of sense now because you want people to be excited to come in if they're this big beautiful building and open floor plan, like that's going to get people jacked to come into the office when you're struggling to get people to come in i think so i think the culture piece and and having a vibe that your employees actually like to be in is super important and i think we forgot that over the last few years with this work from home thing you know my wife's at target and i was at target for a long time too and the feeling of walking in, they call it the Great Hall. You walk in through security, you're in the, the corporate buildings downtown Minneapolis, and there's this huge open area, nothing but chairs and couches and a huge fireplace. And they have an entire, it's like a two-story wall of, of, it's the plant wall, it's, it's growing live greenery, the cafeterias, like everything is there and it's always buzzing and it's always exciting. And you have to walk through it usually to get to the elevators to go to your floor. And I swear, like just walking through that space would be a little bit of like a shot of adrenaline. Uh, okay, cool. I, I'm I'm a little more excited to be here than I was driving down through traffic. It well, makes a difference. It, 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 and what's interesting too is like for the people that have been at Target, the lifers, thirty years, or like guys like Brian Cornell, they probably don't give a flying fuck as they're going through there. No, they have a private elevator. They just go right up to their. Floor. Oh, seriously? Yeah, they don't even. That's really funny. So like, well, we could talk, but we could unpack that for a while, but. Think about being that newbie. Think about being the person who just got the job at Target. Like, um, you, you are going to be so excited to show up to work every day. You're going to be elated. Like, you, you, you've you got that. So, that's really cool. Abby, we're going to build a little tunnel as we come into our office for you. And it's going to have, like, some positive sayings or something. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to do this. So, like, all right, we're 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 early stage entrepreneur. We probably don't have a space. So, we're just figuring out how to, how to get a space. Like, wh what's your advice for someone that... Let's say they're just just getting going. They're six months into this thing. They probably don't have a ton of revenue. Do you get a space? Don't you get a space? Like, what do you want to say? My advice, like, so I got a space because at the time uh, with my with my kids and all the chaos and like, again, I I was in a unique position. I'm going to bucket into things. If you're if you're doing physical tangible property, go get a space. Product, you mean? Yeah. So in my case, my wife got sick of cleaning green powders and red powders and orange powders and all these different powders off of the kitchen, everywhere in the house. Right? She's like, get a get a damn office space. So I found an office space that it was incredibly cheap. I mean, like, like you know, in the grand scheme of things, all in, it's like sixteen a foot, and that's that is with every possible conceivable thing included in there, except for a hundred dollars for Wi Fi. It's a that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. And so. I don't know, man. I like, I, I would probably say like stay in your house as long as you can. Um, hell you're probably better off. Have you ever, have you ever seen those like portable backyard, um, casitas guest houses? Yeah. Like the, the shed things. 
No, there's actual companies like they, they ba basically pour a pad, they back up, they put it on folds and it's like luxury. Like, they're amazing. Yeah. If you got the money, I'd put that thing in. Then you're not leaving the house. You, well, you're not you're not driving and like if, if unless you want to. But you have extra space. It adds equity value to your house. Yeah. Assuming you can put one in. I, I, I love that concept, but we've talked about it. Like eventually I think it'd be dope to build a, build like a garage on our property, but make it actually our office and our studio and everything right there. Yeah. Just cause it, it saves, I mean, it adds equity right now. We pay, we pay someone 1300 bucks a month and we don't get any, like we don't have anything to show at the end of the year for it. Yeah. So a year of even the cheap, Class C rat infested. We don't have rats, but that building is thirteen hundred times twelve is. 14, I mean, yeah, we spent like sixteen thousand, eighteen thousand a year on rent, if not more. And one of those pop up, pour the pad and have the pop up backyard office building, basically bare bones, eighty k, eighty. Yeah. Oh shit! I thought there were some at Costco that were like fifteen, twenty. Maybe at Costco. I'm talking like the higher end one, like the, like the the ones that come with the AC and they come with the kitchen. Oh. They come with the. They have literally everything you could possibly imagine. Yeah, dude. I mean, you could you could easily go out. I think if you're somewhat handy, you could probably build yourself an office on your property. You know, you got to do the pet. Like I don't know, probably forty grand under today's economic environment, depending on where you are and and who you use. But I mean, think about it, that's two years, two and a half years of rent. And now again, we have cheap cheap rent. Yeah. There's a lot of people that, I mean, like, just look at some of the spaces that we've looked at. I mean, that's that's 800 square feet. Um, you start getting into the 1,500, 2,000 square foot, that's the problem is they want, they want you know, 22 bucks a foot, 18 bucks a foot, 19 bucks a foot, plus cam, plus taxes. I mean, you're talking 29 bucks a foot at that point. I, and I look at them like, these people, like, they want 40 grand a year for real estate. Like, I, that's... I don't know what small business is going to spend that type of asinine money other than businesses that think that they, they, I don't know. Right. We've talked about this. We're in a unique space because we're, we're not, we're not a tech company. We don't have a bunch of money flowing in. Right. And if you're listening to this, you're probably not a tech. You may not be a tech company. You probably don't have an, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to tap into. If you have that, go get the best space you can. But if you don't be scrappy, be creative. That's why we're sitting in this, this room is because we're scrappy and creative and wanted to get a place that wasn't going to cost us a fortune. Exactly. It, you know, the, the consulting group that I'm a part of, he's never had an office. He's 20 some years into this business doing, you know, a few million dollars a year and, and revenue and profit never once has, he, he's been completely out of his house always. And it, the team's remote. So it's a little different, but like there's businesses out there doing decent revenue, doing lots of volume and it doesn't, they don't need a space. It's just an expense to him, and he's not willing to pay it. Yeah, but Matt, who who goes to work there? Who who does he hire besides who? me? Yeah, like like describe the type of person that that guy would hire. Oh, he's hiring admins and people that are going to be on a computer, anyways. And they're usually remote. But what else about those people is unique to being remote? I'm not sure. These aren't entry level people. This isn't. Oh. You you you're not going in like the whole remote thing makes sense if you have entry level people if, if you do if, if you don't have any entry level people it's fine but in your world like i think when i hear you talk about the food brokerage world well how the hell do you learn all this stuff you're only going to learn it by being in that world either being on the buy side like you were or being or or working in a brokerage well you're dude, there's no where there's no way timmy can be remote at 22 in the food brokerage world with no That's experience like, he's gonna he's gonna lose he's gonna so if you are only going after, which I think eventually becomes a pain in the ass for a lot of companies, because I think about like when we're big and successful and doing hundreds of millions of dollars in sales, there's going to be that, like, we're going to have to go hire college kids because we want to fill that back stock, right? Like we want young people, we want that talent. And if we're all remote, there's no way, I don't think, I don't think there's a conceivable way you can do it. That's a great point. I didn't think about it through the lens of people who are, are coming they're coming to the job and to the company to learn. They're not already experts in the field. Though. And of yeah. course, if that's the case, you do have to have a place that you're hanging out. Yeah, I mean, I, I that, that's that, that's a big conundrum right now in real estate, I think, and and big businesses. How do you get these people back in the office? I don't, like I say, maybe I say this, I can't remember if I was saying this to you guys or who I was talking to you, but like, if I, if I had a dream world running a business, it would be Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, you're in the office, and Fridays, I expect you to work from like 7.30 to 9.30 in the morning. 
just get caught up, make sure everything's done, and then have the expectation like if an urgent email comes in, respond to it. But you get you get from nine thirty on Friday until Monday morning. Go on, go go up to your cabin, go do whatever you want. So many of the podcasts that we've listened to in the e-commerce space, they work Monday through Thursday. They don't even work. Most of these most of these e-commerce companies that I've listened to don't work on a Friday. They're like, how much is going on? We're e-commerce. But also Monday through Thursday, like they're in the office and they work their ass off. Yeah. And I think that there's like, be interesting to do an experiment. We're not big enough, but me, I, I just think about that because the other thing that I've always thought of really kind of funny, if you're starting a business and you have a bunch of employees, like think about this. If you're the guy that says, or gal that says like be in the office from nine to five, when your employees need to do something, i.e. they need to go to get a driver's license or deal with anything with the government, they can't do it. They have to take time off. Like, why not give people every a half day every Friday so they can actually go get this shit done so they're not stressing out and be like, hey, like, you are not going to the government center. I'm not giving you time off of Monday to go to the government center. You can do that on Friday. It doesn't make sense. Like, yeah. so, so flawed in so many regards how we how we operate as a as a business. Well, it, it drives me a little nuts, and I didn't realize it until I left corporate America in 2020, and I could make my own schedule and do my own thing. It's amazing how much you get done during the week with things like that, doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, going to take care of things that you just have to get done where you have to go to a place that's only open Monday through Friday. Like, things are closed on the weekends still, and the weekends is, is the time to do everything that you have to do that you couldn't get to through the week. It, it just it stresses me out, like being able to get a few things done on a Wednesday or Friday, and then actually enjoy my weekends. It, to me, that's 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 the way to do it. If you can find, have a company that allows you to, I would completely agree with you because I think well, along the same lines, you don't realize it until you get out of the nine to five. Most people in nine to five will say, "I create my own schedule," because I think everybody likes to believe that they can, but there is not really free will in the world. Like everybody, we do what we're told to do to unpack that. Even going into switchback world, right? Like, you know, I get up early almost every day. I'm working before the average person's even awake. I'm responding to emails. I'm doing things. Why at three o'clock am I still in the damn office? I don't need to be in the office. I like, I, it's not like I'm doing by, by three o'clock. I'm not that productive. So I think that's the other piece is like, just do what you want to do. Work when you work, when you're most productive, don't work when you're not productive. And I think it's a lot better. Like, but um, this morning, the Wall Street Journal is going to send you this article. It's great. It's like $383 billion, I think, is was the number, is bought on e-commerce during the workday throughout the year. So if you go back to 2020, before everybody went remote, we've added $383 billion to the economy yeah. of people buying and surfing stuff during the workday from 9 to 5 that weren't buying stuff on e-commerce before because because now that they're working from home and they're working remotely, there's no stigma. So they're on the zoom call and they click out of the screen. They go buy something and go read reviews. They click it by they jump back in at the office. They couldn't do that or they felt guilty that if someone saw them, they get in trouble. Yeah. 383 billion added to the U S economy since COVID. Is that good or bad? I mean, we could go both ways with that, right? Personally speaking, I think I think it's absurd because mo like you again, you look at the like credit card debt is going up. All these things continue to rise. Credit card debt. As a owner of a company standpoint, do you think that's a good or bad thing? Which piece? That that much is being spent during the workday instead of work happening. I think it's bad. I mean, it, but it's tough. Like it's like well, I feel like I'm like shooting myself in the foot because we're an e-commerce company. We need. People, we, we want people to be buying, but even us, we don't, which is funny though, Matt, like look at when we're, when our sales come in, 90% of our sales come in at night after five o'clock PM, people aren't searching for food. I think they probably get home. They're like, Oh man, my day was, Oh, I had four cheeseburgers for lunch and I was going to have that salad dog, but fuck, <laughs> I need to get healthy today <laughs> or, or, the, or they get home and like, I, like this is the way I envision it. I don't know if this really happens. I don't think this is how most people come across our product. This is a scenario, Matt, that I just, I just envision mom is at work and she's just having a wonderful day because being a mom is the easiest thing in the world, right? Our wives would agree with that. It's just oh, yeah. so cakewalk. Yeah, if our wives were here. They would just smack. By you. the way, I'm joking. Uh, mom gets home and she's like, she's already pissed. She's got 50 things to do. And all of a sudden, or she stays at home and she's burnt out from the kids all day. It comes time for dinner. The kids like, I'm not going to touch my vegetables. And they're just like flicking the peas. And they're, they're like, no, I'm not touching the shit. And mom's like, 
these kids are going to die if I don't get them vegetables. And so she's like, kids, vegetables, good tasting and switchback pops up. And then she's like, oh, that's not actually how it happens. But like, yeah, in my mind, that's how it happens. We would have to actually have something that says kid vegetables, good tasting. And that's not what we have. Well, I'll write a blog post this afternoon. Yeah. Kids, vegetables, good tasting. Is that five words? I don't know. But yeah, we're doing it. Going back to the productivity thing, dude, it, it's so like as you were talking about on a Zoom call, being distracted, clicking off the Zoom call and going and doing something else. I just found myself kind of giggling a little bit because that's exactly what happens now. Like I'm on a Zoom call and, you know, some teammate that deals with some other part of the business, like inventory. I don't do anything with inventory. And they start talking inventory. And I'm like, yeah, I'm bored. I'm, I'm, I don't need to know this. I'm checked out. And, I'll, you know, they, we don't require cameras on because that's a violation of privacy, right? What if we're not in a good spot to be on camera, right? You got to respect people's choices on if they want a camera or not. No, I think if the camera's not on, then they're fucking around at some point and they're going to lose interest and go away. And I, I think that that is the only. I love the f- flexibility and the freedom of work from home and Zoom and all that sort of stuff. But I do feel like people are just not as engaged when you need them to be engaged. I, you know, I, I would agree with that. I would also say one thing on the, on the, on the flexibility for you, like the, the camera off. My camera's almost never on, on phone calls. And that's usually because I go and walk. Because then I actually pay attention to what you're saying. But if I'm sitting at my desk, even if the camera's on, I'm like, fuck me, this is boring. Right. I, I hate video calls. I love like I'll, I'll do a phone call because I can go walk and I'm, I'm I'm singularly focused. But if I'm just sitting there, it's 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 really bad. Yeah. But it, it was funny. I remember during the pandemic, early on in the, the pandemic, uh, the company I used to work for, one of the one of the leaders, we were having like an all company, all all sales person meeting, and like half the people didn't have their camera on. And, and you this, know they're not doing anything. This dude lost his shit, and then like like four people had their hats on, had like a hat on. And he's like, who the hell comes to a work meeting wearing a, wearing a baseball cap? And I'm like, dude, who gives a shit? This is like, seriously, this is a Zoom call, an internal Zoom call. You want me wearing a suit and tie? Like, this makes no sense. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I wear a hat all the time, partly because I'm bald, partly because I'm too cheap to go get these things embroidered with my logo. <laughs> <laughs> see that it says switch back it's my yeah. logo this is my mark this is my walking billboard um i i kind of want to just get a big old like this just get a big old tiger embroidered on the back just walk around with sweet tigers you should get it tattooed on your back like as big as you can we hit a million dollars in sales i will get a tram stamp of a tiger tattoo and flaunt that proudly because oh, then someday somebody's like what's that i'm like uh, let me tell you a story and they're like fuck oh he's got another story yeah. See, and if my camera was off and we we're on a Zoom call, I could hit mute and just go dick around on my phone or something. Yeah, you'd, you'd be bored. This whole the culture thing, the the flexible. I like your idea again. If, if the expectation is Monday through Thursday, let's go back to that, right? Let's say it's it's eight hours in the office. Fuck, I I even hate the eight hours in an office thing. I think it's arbitrary. I think hours spent in a desk doesn't equate at all to work. I think it's zero goals it, it doesn't for the do week. Shit. Goals for the week. Here's the things that you got to get done, right? This is what your role entails. Get that done. A, it's easy to track. B, if you're doing the things you're supposed to be doing, you're moving the business forward. And if that takes you four hours in an eight-hour day, awesome. But if you're in the office Monday through Thursday and you get all your shit done, like there's nothing wrong then with the culture part, with talking to your employees, with having fun, with going out to a fun lunch, like being together bonding and doing work i think is is the missing piece monday through thursday in the office awesome friday do what you want work a couple hours and make sure you're good to go friday go go recharge relax enjoy saturday and sunday go do what you have to do so that when monday comes again you're ready to go yeah my my only stipulation with that would be like if, we, if i had a big company and, and that was our rule is like don't take advantage of it don't be like don't be like, oh, I'm working from home Thursday. I, I would literally be like, you know, if you're not in the office on Thursday or Monday, you're taking vacation. Like that's a vacation day if you're not, like, right? Because then people are gonna be like, oh, I'm working from home on Thursday. Like, I, no, 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 you're not. No, 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 you're you're going to your I cabin I think it early. depends on who the person is. Like, yes, but, but what I'm saying though is like, if you look at it, like, the majority of people are working on Friday, but they're not actually working because but, they're- But again, if, if you've got- here's the shit that has to happen this week and everyone's on board. 
and you can get it done. It's not a big deal. It, it, it shouldn't be a big deal. Again, th now this goes into hiring and everything else. Make sure you have people on the team that you trust to do what they're supposed to do. But there's a new normal happening. Like Amanda, my wife, is in the office this week. Target has core weeks, they call them. So once a quarter, every single week, or once a quarter for a week, every person has to be in the office. Right? You have to go to whatever your office space is. It wasn't very long ago that it was one day a quarter, and it wasn't very long ago that it was not recorded at all. So Target is slowly doing this thing, but I absolutely think it's going to get back to in the next couple of years. Every day you're in the office. Do they just slash prices on five thousand yeah, so everyday like, items? They they're yeah. going to need to figure out how some, dude, some they're, productivity. They're struggling. Well, dude, they, their first their first decline of in quarterly sales in like eight years. They were down one point seven percent. It's like it. That to me is in an inflationary period still. Yeah, I mean inflation's not stopping. Like I don't I don't give a shit who you are. I'm not an economist. I'm not gonna pretend to be one. I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. I like inflation's not going anywhere. And so companies like Target, yeah, they're damn right. They're gonna be like, dude, you're in the office because if you're not working, you're not getting your shit done, you're gone. And that's that's eighty thousand dollars we just added back to the bottom line because I mean, like, dude, it, it's wild. It, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens with companies like Target and a lot of these other companies. Have well, and, and Target is a slow mover in getting back in the office. And I can speak 100% from experience in the merchandising world, which is the, the part of the company that decides what products is, is a store going to carry in the first place. If you're not with your peers, if you're not with people seeing product, if you, the vendors aren't coming in, talking to you and showing you new stuff, you're sitting back and relaxing and you're not pushing the, the envelope like you should, right? Like in Target still, I have yet to, well, I've had like one, two in-person meetings in four years. Holy crap. When 98% of all meetings would have been in person prior to the pandemic. Like you can't tell me that they're doing an effective job in the merchandising world, maybe HR is different, maybe finance is different, but in merchandising, when you rely on other companies to bring you ideas and partner with you, you can't tell me that work from home is, a, is an effective model. And back to the whole culture and, and office space and all that sort of stuff too, like getting people together in a fun collaborative environment, like hopefully this is gonna become for us, you just, your brain's on a different frequency. You're thinking more, you're doing more, you're more excited to actually make shit happen. So kind of, Tying all this stuff together, I think you're seeing real world examples of this play out in major companies. I think you're 100% right. I, mean, I think even at my former company, I was so checked out for a while, um, partly because the office I was in was horrid um, from a sales standpoint, not, not great. We bring in this new guy who's one of my best friends, Andrew, and Andrew comes in and like literally he's he's 12 feet away from me in his office we start jamming about stuff we start calling on company like it completely changed yeah. that vibe culture and team and that and that was the biggest thing is that i like he come in they'd be like yeah you can work remote i never would have gotten to know him i never would have gotten the opportunity to grow with him i never would have learned from him um i mean he he taught me a tremendous amount and so when i think about that these companies that are saying hey remote's fine like yep. I'm, I'm of the belief, like, no, you should be in the office. Like you are not going to learn. Um, yeah. and it, it is funny because remember four years ago, four long years ago, I was like, we are never going back to the office. This is the new normal. Blah, blah, blah. Dude, all it takes is, I mean, every business, I don't care if you're left or right, every business needs money. And when that money starts to go away because you're losing productivity, yeah, you're going to start to change things pretty damn quick. So Kudos to you if you own a business, you run a business with, with great productivity and people work remotely, but I don't think it's the case for most. Right. Cool, man. Well, I, uh, this is an interesting topic. And I think if, again, you're a small business owner or entrepreneur trying to figure this stuff out, like really think through how you want your culture and how you want your office space to be and like what, what is the vision? And it can be totally fine if day one, you got to work from out of your, your house or day one, you're in a class C building. And your vision is three years from now, you're in something else. Like work towards what you want to get to, but don't jump in too quick. We're going to add one one new thing to the podcast here. Yeah, what's up? So at the end of the, to sort of wrap up every show, we're going to do one thing from the last week or whatever that was like, man, this is a really good thing for us, for you, for whatever. Business, through business lens or dad lens, whichever one you want. So call it your win of the week. So I'm putting you on the spot. I didn't tell you we were doing this. No, you didn't. This is kind of tough. My my, uh, I don't my, my my win of the week was we took our kids to Valley Fair on on Saturday Sunday. 
What's Valley Fair? If it's a it's an so. amusement park here in the in, in the Twin Cities. It's part of the Cedar Fair. So like like twenty of them across the country, and we desperately needed something like that for the kids because it was the kids loved it. They got to go on a bunch of rides. Uh, it was it's relatively inexpensive for a season pass. It's ninety dollars for the entire year, and it was just rejuvenation. Like we got home, the kids were on cloud nine. They were happy. We were happy. We spent the entire day outside walking around. It was awesome. And, and we desperately needed something fun like that as a family after spending a winter, basically, you know, not leaving the house or, or whatever. So it was great to be outside. Nice. How about you? Your uh, win of the week. Win of the mm-hmm. week. I think from, do I want to go family? Should I go family focused or business focused? You can do either or. You said either or, buddy. Well, I, I think I'm going to go business focused on this one. I think just having the space last week was kind of a, the last couple of weeks were pretty tough. For us, I think just mentally, emotionally, like what what are we doing? You might, you might. I'm, I'm going to rephrase that. I don't like to speak for Matt all the time, but sometimes I do. The last couple of weeks fucking sucked. They, like they, literally sucked to the point, Matt, where like 48 hours ago, I said to my wife, like we might need to sell our house now because like we just we're like we've talked about it on previous podcasts. So yes, I want to hear what the rest of what you have to say. And we can unpack my feelings later. It's really tough at this stage of starting a company and, sucks. and not knowing where we're going and what we're doing exactly, because what the fuck do we know? We're just the three. We're the three best friends that are <laughs> 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 right? uh, God help Abby. But like, you know, I, I think we had some good learnings. We had some ahas. We have a space where we feel like we can start to ha- create some magic and, the business, like, I don't know. I, I do feel like we made a lot of progress and now, now it's all about ex- execution. Like stop thinking, stop overthinking, just execute, execute, execute. And I feel good about where we're going. I, I like that. Maybe we can, we can eat a cinnamon roll quick and then rejam on yeah, some of the, yeah. some of these discussion points. Cause the last week was pretty pivotal. So awesome. That's what we got. We'll see you. In a, we'll see you, see you in a week. Sounds good. All right.